What's up, everybody? It's been a minute, but it is good to be back. I've uh, been working on a couple of albums, kept me away for a while, but I'm happy to be back to share with you another behind the scenes look at one of my cues. Um, this is a hybrid tension cue, uh, which has um, a bunch of different elements, of course, some orchestral elements, of course, tension uh, elements, also some rock elements and some sound design elements. So um, it's called Showdown Climax, and y'all know how we do it. We'll take a listen to it, then we'll talk about it on the flip. Let's go. Again, Showdown Climax, um, as I said, it is a hybrid uh, tension cue. Uh, some of the basics, um, it starts in G minor, 117 beats per minute. Um, and as I stated uh, in my intro, you can hear that it has a lot of your typical uh, tension elements, which of course would be your pulses, um, etc. Uh, and then it has some orchestral elements um, in terms of your strings and your low brass. And then we got some rock drums that kind of pop in there um, a little later. And then some sound design elements as well. And put all those together and we have a hybrid cue. So um, let's start uh, with the core, I believe, of any attention cue, uh, which would be our pulses. Um, and as you heard, I mean, I have a number of pulses in the cue, but the uh, first pulse that I want to talk about and probably the most important pulse um, is the bass pulse. Um, so I, I consider that the heartbeat uh, of the cue. So let's take a look at what I am using uh, for my bass pulse, um, it is an Omnisphere uh, patch, um, and it is from um, the Unfinished, and it's from the Colossus 4 um, set uh, within the Unfinished, uh, and this particular patch is called Biathlon. 
So um, it, it's a you know pretty cool patch. I'm gonna show you the ARP uh, and let me kind of play, just play that for you. So it's a great sound. And you kind of see how we have it, you know, set with, um, you know, the accents. And it's a pretty, um, you know, long, in terms of our Lanthem, you know, it's 32. Um, but it's, it's really about the pulse of it. It's a 16th uh, note pulse. Uh, and that kind of gets us going, um, if you will, in terms of saying, hey, I'm attention cue, <laughs> right? Um, so then our um, second pulse that comes in is also an omnisphere pulse and it's from colossus 4 as well um and this particular pulse so let me play that for you is right and that's called all the strange creatures um, and if you see how that is set, it kind of gives you a little off kilter feel in terms of the timing, because you see, we only have, um, that set, um, to 10. So it's not set to like eight or to 12 or 16. So it's a little uneven, uh, which gives us, you know, just a little, you know, more a sense of just kind of being off just a little bit. So listen to it again. So you hear how the accents are hitting on that. But so it just gives you a different type of pulsing, although it's still um, a 16th uh, note in terms of how that, um, you know, is set up. Uh, so, again, that's from the unfinished Colossus 4 um, as well. And then we have another pulse. Like we, yeah, we are pulse crazy. All right, and this is our third pulse here. Now this pulse is coming from a really cool uh, synth that I've, I've started using recently. Um, it's the Elements Modern Scoring Synth. Um, and this pulse, um, as you see, is just, I went to their distorted bank. Um, and this is just the, the synth sequence uh, number nine within uh, that particular uh, bank, and this is uh, it here. So I wanted to let that delay, so you hear, so obviously you hear I have a, a stereo delay on it, right? Um, and then I also have um, the uh, decapitator. Uh, on it as well. So we're adding some distortion uh, to it as well. So, well, let's look at the um, delay first. So let me, let's see. So I'll just show you how we have it set here. So, um, you know, as you can see, you heard the delay was to the left. Um, and you see, I'm, I'm using a whole note in terms of the delay feedback about 50%. So it lasts a pretty long time. That sets the, the kind of number of, you know, pulses that we're going to hear, um, or whatever. And then again, my wet dries about 50%. Uh, and then you see over here on the right, because I'm not really wanting to affect the right side too much. My wet dry mix is way down, um, at 2.5%. Uh, so <clears throat> something that I want to show you in terms of the reason, um, that I did that is if we take a look over here, um, you'll see in terms of my panning that I have it pan to the right, right? So um, coming back over here, um, you'll see that that's why I wanna have my delay happening on the left. So we hear the sound on the right and then it kind of moves uh, to the left. Play that again for you just very quickly. And then, of course, you hear how it finishes uh, over uh, on the left in the stereo field. So the other thing is, so I'll just play the sound for you. Well, I'll show you. So the delay, um, 
I'm sorry, the distortion that I'm using uh, is a decapitator. Um, and as you see, uh, I'm using the, um, the end style uh, in terms of the sound I'm, I'm using, which is modeled after the Neve 1057 uh, input channel. And of course I have the punish on, and then I have the drive you see set at about um, four and a half. Now all these letters um, do you know, mean something like the A, they're, they're modeled after different inputs on, on different boards, like the A um, is the Ampex 350, the E is the, this the Chandler uh, EMI um, TG channel, and then we already talked about the N uh, being the Neve, and then the T um, is for, from the Thermionic culture vulture and then you have a triode setting here which is the t and then the p is also from the culture vulture and that's a pentode setting so just i mean in case you guys weren't aware like what all those letters are for but at the end of the day you know what i mean listen to it see how it affects your sound and you know kind of choose what what sounds good um to your ear so if we bypass it i'm sorry that's what it's on now bypass. Back on. Okay. So cool. So there you have that. Um, and then I have a fourth uh, pulse um, that I'll show you very quickly as well and my fourth pulse is also from that's right the elements minus scoring synth um and this is just a distorted um uh sequence that i like is this, this distorted uh, sequence number three is, is how they have it named and it's just and i didn't do anything to it, it it's just straight uh, straight out of the box. Um, I just happen to like the sound and um, I used it. So let's pop back over to this uh, screen here to my mix window. So um, something that I do want to show you is just very quickly make sure that um, all of you know your pulses your sounds are occupying different spaces within the stereo field um just so you know they own ha they ha all have their own um space so you see the i have one pulse um pulse i'm sorry um you know to the left about 10 degrees and then i have another one to the right at about 10 degrees and then i have another one um to the right about 54 degrees so um just uh, that's something i, I just kind of wanted to note um for you to be thinking about um you know as you're using multiple pulses so they're just kind of not um all you know on top of uh each other so now Let's look at, I would say, uh, next, another, obviously, a very important uh, element, and that would be the ostinato. And, of course, we know ostinato is just a repeated, uh, you know, motif or, or pattern. Um, and I have the ostinato happening within the, the uh, string section. Uh, and this is another pulse. So, um, but what I did, so I started with the violas, um, which you hear here. Okay, and that, um, of course, the Cinematic Studio Strings, um, viola. And then what I do is I double just the viola uh, with a synth uh, patch as well. So. So we just put those um, two together. And then the synth. Um, that I'm using or that particular patch is just a um, is omnisphere, omnisphere patch called Beyond Pluck um, and um, yeah I'm not doing anything special to it um, just have it coupled with um, the um, viola and and just double that and then what I do because it is tension and we want to continue to kind of build obviously tension as we move i just add harmonic layers um as the cue moves along so we start with the viola and the um synth right 
Then what we do, I add a violin two up the minor third, and then I add violin one up a fifth, and then I add additional layers even on violin one. I go, I double the fifth, and then I go up again and double uh, the root. So let's just kind of play. I'm just going to play those layers for you um, very quickly so you can hear how that string layer builds. Uh, let's just start here so we don't have to listen to a whole bunch of it. Here we go. So it just helps us build tension um, as we move um, throughout the cue. So just a simple uh, thing that you can do uh, in, in terms of building tension. And then what we also have um, is a counter line uh, from our cellos. So I have them uh, playing this line here. So if we add that just with the uh, violas very quickly so you can just hear how they work together. Right? And then I have some, I'm sorry, Metropolis Arc low strings um, that just adds a little punch uh, to all of it. So we get that. And then if we add our synth pulse in, this is how all that energy works together. So there you have it in, in terms of all of the uh, pulses or the motors uh, that we're using. So all the various motors that we're using um, throughout the queue. So now let's take um, a look at our drums. So um, I start actually with uh, some toms with just a, uh, a tom roll um, and it's, it's real sparse. So let's go there, um, kind of get here. So we got this tom roll you hear. And you hear I have a little delay on it. And then it builds a little more. So that is just, that's the only thing that I have in terms of drums um, in the opening. And what I am using is, um, I'm using Damage 2, and I don't, I don't know what I did to the times. I, I named them Jeff's time, so I, I, I did something. I don't know what I did. Um, probably just tuned them a certain way or, or whatever. But yeah, I see I, det I detone, detuned them a whole step, a couple of sem um, semitones, and probably did some other processing or, or what have you. But uh, just the uh, Damage 2 times and the only thing again that i have on those in terms of processing is i have um again stereo delay and you heard it to the right uh this time so um it's just throwing um to the right uh just a little bit and you know a whole tone and, and, and I'm, I'm sorry a whole note and you heard that and then i'm using a little low air um, and it, you know, it may not even hardly be noticeable, but just to give it a little more kind of low air, um, and I think I have it, um, where is it at? Yeah, at about 80 hertz. Um, just give it a little low air at around 80 hertz. So, again. And then if we bypass the low air, it's very subtle. 
and that's it. That's all I'm using um, on the times. Uh, and then one thing that I do is, I'll, I'll show you guys this as well, is notice that as, my, as I get into my theme, with the times I just bypass the stereo delay because I don't want it to now clutter up the track as we get more things in. So you'll see, and it just bypass, I'm sorry, <laughs> the point here, and we just have it bypassed now because we don't, we don't need that. But then that open section, you know, it was good um, to have it because we have so much space here that having that, you know, stereo delay effect there um, doesn't hurt us. So, and that's here what you see with my automation. If you if you look at this right here, you can see that I have my, it bypass the bypass on um, right at um, you know four four three with the cue starts, then the bypass off at six one plays through and then we put the bypass back on at bar 17 so in terms of how you can just kind of write in um your automation um as well okay so let's keep it moving now once the um theme comes in i add some more drums just to kind of um help pick up the the pacing a little bit so i'll start a bar before and we'll kind of get in so So as you hear, I mean, it's nothing like over the top, right? Just adding some pacing. Um, we got a little, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a little gong scrape um, just to kind of get us into the section. Um, we have some Tycho's, uh, uh, but man, I'm playing these really softly. Just pacing. That's all we're doing there. We're just looking for a little pacing. Um, you know, as you see, uh, let's see here in terms of, so if we look at, yeah, so I'm hitting them at about 104, you know, not hitting them, uh, you know, very hard uh, or whatever, but again, just to get up some pacing. And then I'm using some Hans Zimmer, our percussion, and um, we are using the buckets. Uh, so we have the buckets, and if you listen to this. So we have that. And then we also, we're using buckets here as well. And then we have, so you, you hear we have one pan to the left, one pan to the right. So we get that nice stereo uh, spread. Um, and if I show you again, this window over here, these are our buckets here. So you see I have one pan um, left 38, one pan right 47, just to give us that, that nice stereo um, a spread there um, with the uh, buckets. And then the only other thing I think I want to show you with those, I don't know why my glue came up, <laughs> those, which I felt was really important is to get the accents right in, in terms of, you know, what we're trying to do there. So if you listen to it, so bop, 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 bop. So just, you know, little things like that really do uh, make a difference, um, you know, as you're trying to, you know, craft your cuties, small details make a difference kind of in the, the overall uh, scheme of things, right? So um, as we continue to go along and our drums uh, start to build a little bit, what you notice um, that I add is actually a drum loop. So comes in. So basically that that is a um, a rock drum loop um, and you see that I have it rendered out. Um, and let me get you back to 
this screen here. So you'll see that I have it. You see, I say drum loop render. So I had a loop. It was actually a little slower. So I sped it up. Then I rendered um, the loop to audio. Uh, and then I added a little distortion to the loop. Um, now this time though, you see I'm using the um, the E style, which again was the Chandler EMI um, input. Um, so, and then we, we punished it, but you know, only at a little over one. Um, and then I wet dry, you see what we're, we're set there um, as well. <clears throat> so if we play it with the distortion, And we play it without the distort, I'm sorry, without the distortion, let's bypass that. Total difference. So there you have that. And, and it's amazing how, as, as the cue grows, how this just adds some more pacing and some more grit. So I'm actually gonna, um, let's start here. Um, and so we're coming from here. Yeah. And there you go. So, um, in terms of my drums, that that's pretty much it. That that adds my additional uh, pacing and grit. So the next uh, thing that I'll show you is kind of what I'm doing for my melodic content, and it's not much at all. Um, I have my low brass that's actually uh, carrying the melody, and all I'm using is um, the BBC um, bass trombone which is here. And then I have the shorts doubled with it just to give it um, a little accent. So you hear how adding the short with the long just gives it more definition. If we play it by itself. It's fine, right? But now if we add the short articulation with that, I mean, you really get the articulation. It really defines it. It's much more defined um, with, with adding, layering in that short with the long, right? And then of course I have um, Pandora. And that just gives you the nasty. Oh my gosh, that just gives you the nasty. And then the other, the final piece that I layer in is the Matrop Metropolis Art Low Brass Crescendo. And I'm using the medium uh, crescendo on this one. You, they have a long, a medium, and a short, and it just, you know, you can time out which one kind of best fits, and it just helps give you that nice um, um, crescendo on the end of the phrase that really gives it more of like a live player kind of feel. So if we add that crescendo in. So you hear how it gives it that nice crescendo. It sounds like a you know a live musician just ah giving that note that last little um, you know push of energy, uh, if you will. And that's it um, in terms of um, my melody. Now the only other sound that I have, um, <clears throat> excuse me, let me give me a little swig of water here. Okay, so, well, I need to follow that up with some coffee. <laughs> uh, all right, there we go. Okay, so the only other sound, <clears throat> excuse me, that I have um, in this first section um, is a sound from the unfinished as well. So, uh, Omnisphere, a sound from the unfinished, hope I say this right, is Gai Kaiju. Um, is is the set the sound set is the unfinished guy kaiju and this sound is called firethorn um, and I just rendered it out 
to audio. I just bounced it out to audio and then um, just used it. But that particular sound is this. I'm sorry, let's just hear just that sound. So it's, you know, pretty cool sound. Um, and again, the only other thing, if you guys haven't <laughs> figured it out by now, um, I, I like using delay um, and, and using it a lot. Now here I'm using a half note. Um, you see my wet dry is about 50%, but my feedback is 50% as well because I wanted this to last um, a little longer because we, we definitely have the, the space uh, for it. So again... Right, and that's it. That's the entire uh, first half. So if we play it just, um, I, I just want you to hear, I, I'm gonna start from the beginning. I, I just want you to hear how the different layers, how we get the different various, pay attention to the various layers that we have that increases tension up to our edit point. Here we go. So you hear it layering up to that. I just don't want to belabor the point. So that, now our next layer would be. So you hear a nice, clean, distinct um, edit point. So, you know, if the editor decides, boom, yay, the cue ends right there. No problem. Boop, chop, boom, the cue ends, and we're great. You know, no work for the editor. Make their life easy. Uh, really cool. And the only other thing that you guys see um, that I did add as we are... Um, leading up to that edit point is a riser um and and i love esc quantum's um risers and 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 drops and uh um everything they have risers they got drops they got um all kinds of stuff oh whooshes that it, it's a great um library to have in terms they're all audio files um but they're really really cool okay so that gets us to again our edit point uh, and then we just have a basic symbol um swell that gets us into um our b section right so when we get into the b section here's where i do a little more kind of manipulating of things so you know you recall i played this um uh, metropolis art low string for you so we had this so what I did when we got to the B section, I actually dropped that. Let me unmute this for you, um, just so you can hear it. So I dropped that an octave. Right, and let's mute that back. Uh, okay, so Shift M is mute, Shift U is unmute if you're, if you're in Cubase. Um, so muted that back. Now what I did is, I went ahead and rendered that to audio. So that's what you see here. Uh, and let me move that because I see my head is in the way. Okay, so there we go. So I rendered that to audio. Um, so take this out. So you have. And then I processed it um, just a bit. So let me uh, show you guys what I did here. So I added some distortion I added 
the um, Eddie Kramer drum rack. And then I added a chopper to it as well. So I'm gonna bypass this, I'll bypass this. So normal. Add the distortion. You hear how it kind of, you know, kind of distorts it a bit. We add the drum rack. This really gives it, you know, a sense of space. I'm using the time setting there. And then we add the chopper. So you hear how it throws it around. Uh, I'm using a whole a note in terms of my speed and you hear how it's like boom 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 so it just uh, you know affects it and makes it uh, you know just a little more interesting instead of just playing a straight boom 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 just something to make this b section um a little more interesting and a little off kilter um as well so besides that um what i also did is um i for the uh, first four bars, I reversed the drum loop. So we have it. And then it goes back. So so we reverse the drums, we, we bounced out um, the low strings and, and treated them uh, you know, with some other stuff. And then I think I added a, um, a Tam Tam, you know, later on, uh, in the section, um, as well. Other than that, all I'm doing is layering. So if we come out of that edit point into the B section, So you hear again, we have another edit point, right? To get us back to the theme. Now this edit point is a little different. You don't want edit, every edit to sound exactly the same. So we still have a nice clean break where there is enough time for the editor to chop it um, before we um, kind of get ourselves um, back in. So if we hear the, the edit, So clean, nice and clean if they want to get out. And then what we do this time to get us back into our theme, we have a drop and I'm sure that's probably, I don't know if that's from ESE. Yeah, that's from ESE Quantum as well. Um, and then we have another riser that I use from ESE. And then I have a um, this um, sweep that I have here is a sound that I, I probably got off splice or something like that. But all those transitional elements and then uh, I do a, a quick uh, hit uh, on a couple of ferrum hits um, to kind of get us into our final act. Now, when we get into this final section, um, You'll notice like right off jump, of course, we gotta come right back with the theme. We're not building everything back up to the theme now. We've already played the theme, so we can't start from zero. So we're, we've now gotten to a certain level. Our drum loop is you know already back in. So it's like, well, man, how are we gonna like continue to build tension because it is a tension cue and we want to we got to build tension um all the way to uh the end uh of the cue so the thing that i do um to build a little more tension and it comes um a little um you know what one two three about four bars in or on the fifth bar in is i add a horn and synth counter line 
add some additional additional um, tension um, to kind of continue to build that tension um, as we take the cue home. So as we come out of here and get into the theme, I'm gonna get you up to like the counter. So there's where the line starts. And of course, the other thing that, that is an additional layer that we didn't, didn't we did not have before. Forgive me, y'all. I'm excited. So the other uh, layer that we did not have before um, is the uh, this ferrum layer, which is just some hits. So let's listen to those. So just some hits. So we have that layer and then we have this counter line and what I did is I have of course the um, BBC horns A4 which is four horns basically. So we have them playing this. And I double that with because it's hybrid a uh, Omnisphere. And let's see what the Omnisphere is. This is a, a simply line that I'm using there. And it's just a patch called Compression of Energy. Um, and I think I might have, might have added some distortion to it as well. So let's listen to that. All right. And just let's look at how we have that processed. So only thing I have there is... Um, I have some distortion and again you see I'm using the uh, Pinto uh, setting here I don't have the punish on but let's play that again and if we bypass so total difference in terms of but it, it just gives it a little more aggression helps it pop out um, a little more you see my drives about four and a half and then the only other thing that I'm doing is I'm using a dynamic EQ and it's just to help us kind of tame some of those frequencies that want to um, want to pop out there just just keep them under control just particular frequencies that I just you know kind of keep that some of that bottom end energy that we don't need and just a little here okay so that if we play those two together So you hear how that line just, <clears throat> excuse me, just adding that line helps us amp up the tension for um, the cue. So the other thing, and really the final thing that you would notice besides, you know, some, like I said, some drop risers and, and swells, things of that nature, is that this entire cue has been on tonic. We have just been riding on the G the entire time. And then when I get about two bars away from the end, I want to elevate the tension a little more. So I do release from tonic, but I go to the five um, and it just feels like another, it, like it just takes it like up another level. Just that one chord change before we get to the root. So now with bearing all that in mind let's kind of listen to that last section and just notice the different ways that we're continuing to build tension um you know and energy as we move uh, towards the climax of it so let's come out of the edit
there you have it. Um, you know, that is it again. Um, you know, it is a tension piece um, and it's hybrid. Um, and hopefully this just gave you a good look, you know, into how we can utilize the various elements um, together, be it the, the tension elements, orchestral elements, rock elements, sound design elements, pull all these things together and have them work cohesively um, to make, you know, a, a really good tension um, cue. So again, um, as always, I hope that this breakdown was helpful to you, you know, in your journey um, as you're continuing to write and create great music. Um, so um, thank you again for taking the time out to check out my channel and listen. And as always, peace and God bless.